All right, I want to welcome everyone to the Marketing Center of Excellence Masterclass Series. We're in the September Masterclass, and I'm super excited to have Jonathan Mast here as my subject matter expert guest this afternoon. Welcome, Jonathan. Great to have you here. Thank you for the invitation, Lane. I appreciate it. Looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, before we jump into the topic at hand today, I just want to give a couple of quick pointers here for those of you who want to look at previous podcast episodes and or masterclass series, you can always come to our podcast page here on the Marketing Center of Excellence website. And um, we have all of those are going to be here in audio and in video format on our YouTube channel. So you have the links to basically all of our channels, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple, YouTube, Amazon Music, what have you. The audio is also right here embedded on our page. And then you can jump out to YouTube here as well where we have a lot of our, our previous episodes, actually all of our previous episodes, including the Masterclass series and our Spotlight interviews for the Best Practices eShow. Just to give you guys a quick recap of the content that we're putting out on a near monthly basis, there's three basically three types of content that I'm developing to help agencies in your journey and our journey together in building our agencies to fulfill our goals and dreams. It's not always monetary. We understand that. Certainly, I appreciate things beyond just money in life. And hopefully, you guys all have goals and dreams or whys that are uh, beyond just money. But we are definitely helping our agencies grow in different ways. And a lot of that's just content driven. So our podcast episodes where I do, I call it my best practice Z show. And I bring on industry subject matter experts and influencers and interview them and talk about their journey and, and try to unveil their subject matter expertise. And that's in our best practices e-show interviews. I've got Matthew Hunt, Darren Shaw, just as a couple of recent ones. I just finished one yesterday with Justin Rondo from Invisible PPC that was really good. He and I got into almost an unexpected kind of angle of our conversation. It just ended up being a really, I think, valuable conversation. And so I'll have that coming out here in the next couple of days, probably actually next week. Second thing is we have these masterclass series, which are the last Tuesday of every month. And then every month we will cover a certain topic and really try to help develop best practices and strategies and tactics that will help agencies in our own journeys and growing our own agencies and also transferable skills that we can also bring to our clients. And then lastly, my blog. I do have blog articles that I author and I primarily put them on the Marketing Center of Excellence website versus our quantum agency website or our Signal Genesis website. The blog articles that I typically that I personally author, I will put here. And so they're instructionary, typical, typically just release one that I'd call your attention to because there's these this core update that's still running right now. It's called the helpful content update. These come out maybe three, four times a year, once a quarter, maybe, not on any kind of schedule necessarily, but when they happen, they can be pretty tectonic in terms of what happens to the rankings and Things are going up, things are shooting down, and things are all over the place, and it can be confusing. I have an article here on how to navigate that process and navigate it with clients. Because if you don't educate your clients on some of these changes that are happening, you'll be behind the curve. And so you want to stay ahead of it with your clients by just educating them. And so feel free to take any of the content that we're producing here at MCOE, rehash it, repurpose it and then push it out to your clients in the form of a newsletter, an email, text message, blog article, all the above, whatever you might think. And that may even kind of segue into our topic today, which is be developing an omni-channel, omnipresent strategy so that you can stay in front of your prospects, but also I think stay in front of your clients. Because I think it's really important to stay in front of your clients and demonstrate to your clients actively, proactively, that you are the expert, right? And that you're staying, you've got your fingers on the pulse and that you're ahead of the game. And it also will help you reduce churn because if clients don't know what's happening and they're just reacting to what they see and maybe they're the victim of a core update, they're just gonna blame you unless they don't, unless they know otherwise. So feel free to repurpose any of the content that we put out to help your own omni-channel, omnipresent strategy. So let's dive into the topic at hand today. Jonathan, again, thanks for joining us. Why don't you just give us really quick here, a quick overview of what we're going to cover today. Sure, I'd be happy. Again, thank you for the invitation, Lane. I love chatting with agencies about this. 
Today, what I want to do is really talk about how to create an omnichannel omnipresence. In other words, how to be seen as that topical authority for your niche. But you and I have, have been trained by some of the same great people on this lane, and I know we've both worked through this. And I want to share a little bit today about my story, how I've done it, and how it's now generating literally brand new leads every single day for my business that are reaching out to me that want to work with me and my agency, not because I'm doing cold calling. Which is the key, right? We want, and, and that's the same thing we want to develop for our clients. We want people reaching out to us proactively because they've heard of us. Hopefully they've heard of us everywhere, right? Which we're going to Absolutely. talk about. And that, that brings them to us in a kind of a pre-positioned place of preeminence. And they're ready to, to learn and almost ready to buy, right? Uh, but we still have to do our job in terms of communicating with them and closing them and doing all those other things that, that, that in turn take somebody who's interested into an actual prospect. But let's talk about attraction, because that's really what we're talking about, is attracting people to us using omni-channels. So omni-channel meaning many channels, omni, I'm sure you guys understand that, but defining it meaning omni-channel, to me, I look like it as being all channels possible, as, as many as possible, but multiple channels for sure. Not just, not just Facebook or not just LinkedIn or not just email. Omni-channel meaning as many channels as we can to reach our target audience, right? So Jonathan, why don't you just talk about your own journey with this? Because I think that'll really lay the groundwork of what we're going to talk about and maybe give, and then I'll be, I'll, I'll share my quick journey as well so that all of you listening can maybe get a few examples. And we'll give you another example, Josh Nelson as well, who's who both Jonathan and I have learned a lot from in terms of this omnipresent strategy. And we've seen him do it as well. But Jonathan, why don't you tell us about your journey? Yeah, we will do. Well, just a, a quick bit of background for everybody. So uh, for the last 12 plus years, I've been working at the agency that I founded back in 2010, the Valor Circle. And I just recently left that agency to pursue building another agency because it's been a dream of mine. And the good news is my wife owns that company. So I still right. get to stay connected and hear what's going on. But I got to step out of the day to day. And we've been talking about making that move for quite a while. And last year, I decided it was time to really start building up my personal brand, the Jonathan Mast brand, and wanted to do that knowing that this move was going to happen down the road. And I'm assuming that I'm probably like a lot of other agency owners that I just don't have the time to take care of my clients and create content and do everything else that's needed to run an agency. And one of the things that changed late last year was the fact that AI came on the scene and we had the opportunity to start leveraging tools to really expand our time and to make us more efficient. And so that's what I wanna also talk about today. Quick tidbits on my journey. On October 7th of last year, I decided after finally being told multiple times by <laughs> lots of mentors that I, yeah, exactly. I needed a two by four across the face. But I decided I was going to start posting daily videos. Some of them are short videos like reels and, and shorts and TikToks, although I'm not a huge fan of TikTok lane. And I had a whole nother podcast about that. I won't yeah, go there did. today, um, but every single day. And for those of you asking, no, I don't record a video every day, but I post a video every day. And we'll talk about how to do that. I also, three days later, decided that with some inspiration from Josh Nelson and Gary Vaynerchuk, if you know him, that I needed to be posting more social media every day. Uh, one post a day or every a couple of posts a week just wasn't enough. And so I started doing multiple social media posts. I did all of that around a targeted topic and decided that I wanted to be known in my niche for what I did. And so I really started promoting that. And that was all about topical authority, digital marketing, and things related to that. Here's the results. And this is the part that you guys should care about. So it, the good news, it works. The bad news, it doesn't work immediately. You need to start. Remember, my grandfather used to say the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time to plant a tree is today. So as you hear, watch this, don't think, oh man, I've missed out. I haven't done this. No, the best time for you to start if you're on this call is today. Start today. Because guess what? A few months down the road, this is what's going to happen. March of 2023, I started hearing on the sales calls. I'm a sales and marketer. So I'm on lots of sales calls. And I started hearing all the time from people that I'd never met before. We'd hop on a Zoom call, just like we are now. And they go, Jonathan, I feel like I know you because you're all over my social media. Your videos are everywhere. Imagine from a sales perspective, how much easier that made my job, because we already had a no and trust relationship, even though I'd never met them. It was hugely valuable. In July, 
Go ahead, Lane. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your timeline, and I'll then I'll, I'll go ahead. In July, Sorry. I started getting speaking engagements, and they started literally coming out of the woodwork from places I'd never heard of before. And if I take a look at between July or August and so far in September, I've had over 36 speaking engagements that have come from this omnipresence that have created. And we'll talk about that. And if you don't know, speaking gigs are another way to build your credibility and to get in front of other people's audiences. And what better to do as an agency than to leverage other people's audiences to sell what we do? A hundred percent. So I think I, I'll tell you what, what, for me, one of the biggest hurdles, part of it was mental and part of it was real, was the work that I knew it was going to take to put out daily videos, which in full confession, I don't even post a daily video. I am posting daily, but in terms of daily targeted videos with content like Jonathan's going to talk about, I'm not even doing that yet. Because I, to me, again, a part of it, and this is before I talked with Jonathan last week about this, was I think for all of us, we're busy. We've got lives outside of our business. And so the thought of creating content that is going to be allow us to be posting daily, multi, maybe multiple times a day, is overwhelming because of the perceived, in some senses, the real work that's involved in doing this, right? And because, let's face it, it's not like all going to be automated and uh, bot created and posted and you're just going to, and it, after six months of doing this, you're just going to start getting speaking engagements. There's going to be real work that you're going to have to put into this. Because it's your brand. It's you. I love, by the way, I love Jonathan's brand. I just want a white beard strategy. He's got the big white beard. You can't, like, everyone's going to remember that. Like, and that's what you want. You want to be remembered by your audience and you want to build your personal brand and build your brand character. Every like Jonathan's brand has a character. My brand has a character. Like it or not, Jonathan or not, like me or not, like our brand or not. And that's what we want. We want to attract people to us that identify and are attracted. Um, because that is that's the magic of business, right? If you can do business with people that are attracted to you, and everything just goes easier from there. Uh, and usually it's, it ends up being a great relationship too, because there's that there's that magic of a relationship that we all need in our businesses. Like you know the best clients that you have are the ones you have just that really cool magical relationship with. And the clients that are the worst to deal with are the ones where there's just constantly friction. It's maybe maybe even a little bit weird to talk to them or odd. There's just not that connection there or worse, and then they become those hated clients that we have. So I've got the kind of a similar journey, but I, again, I'll, you know, full confession, I was in a coaching session with Josh. Josh is my coach. And this was over a year ago now. And Josh just like what we were talking about. I needed what my biggest need still is sales. We've got ops and fulfillment down pretty well and things are going pretty well. And that's the strategy. But my my role is still sales and business development at the companies. And so he was like, Lane, like the number one thing you need to do is just become omnipresent, start putting content out. You've got lots of expertise, but you got to get it out there. Like, just get it out there and start doing it. Because I know we've talked about this a couple of times. Like Jonathan, he slapped me a couple of times across the face with it. And no one better to do it than Josh, because he's the master at this. Like he, once you're on his radar and you're in his funnel, man, you're, you're going to get, you're going to, you are going to get the perfect omnipresent um, or omni-channel omnipresent campaign because he's there and he's adding value in all sorts of different ways and different channels, right? Again, like Jonathan, I started doing this, just said, I'm going to start doing it. The marketing center of excellence is that the fruition of that, right? I, I, decide I was going to just create a separate brand that I was going to put out content into to my industry, to my clients, to help to my prospects, to help them in their journey and add value, even if they don't ever become a client of mine. And it's done much of the same thing. I've gotten speaking engagement invites. We've gotten more business from it because people are attracted. People, some a lot of times, we just don't want to do the work ourselves. We know what needs to be done, but we'd just have it rather hand it off to somebody. Or in our case, we have Signal Genesis software that also can help in in, a, in many ways, even in what we're going to talk about today. So it, it does work. And I've seen it work with Josh. I've seen it work with multiple other agencies who have gone ahead and done this. Before I launched the real focus on my Best Practices e-show and my Masterclass series, uh, about a year and a half ago, whatever it's been now, I asked Brian Niebler from Roofing Marketers to, to just to, if he would have a session with me because they've done a phenomenal job with their podcast and becoming just known experts in their niche. 
Um, and I wanted to learn from them and what they had done. And so I, so if you want to do this and you have had this kind of perception of, man, this is just going to be such a heavy haul. I don't know if I have the time. I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if I'm going to be good at doing this. Stop with all that. Ask to meet with a few people who have done it. Uh, I'll be glad to meet with you individually. I'm sure Jonathan would, anybody else that's Absolutely. in your network. If you want to just pick their brain on what helped them do it, because the best time to start, like Jonathan said, is today if you haven't done it up until today. So let's dive in. I asked Jonathan to just pare down what are some tips, secrets, things that he can share with us that have helped him in his journey. So we'll dive into those. And then if you guys have questions, put them in chat. If you would like to talk about something, by all means, just chime in and I'll let you, we'll have a little discussion too, because it doesn't want to, we don't want it just to be Jonathan and me talking today, especially if you all have questions as we go through this. So Jonathan, fast tracking content creation. That's one of the biggest hurdles that absolutely we both is real and perceived for all of us is just the the sheer haul of creating content that will amount to us being able to do something daily in an organized format. So I'm going to let you take the floor again and I'll just kind of all right. so go along with you here. Let me deal with the elephant in the room really quick. And everybody goes, Jonathan, how much time does this really take? I'm going to try to show you today how I do this in what averages to about 30 minutes a day. And I know none of us have the 30 minutes a day, but let me ask you this. Would it that be less time than maybe you're putting into or should be putting into your sales and marketing right now? Because that's what you're doing. This is helping influence that tremendously. So I'm going to show you today how to do this and how to get started. The big problem everybody knows is where do I start? I don't know what to do. It's really easy for us as agencies to tell our clients where to start. We can see that just by looking at their businesses. It's so much harder when we're looking at our own business. And so where I want you to start is with Google. And I literally want you to pick your topic. Let's say you're a digital marketing agency and you specialize in serving the med spa arena. I want you to go to Google and I want you to look up med spa marketing. And if you scroll down, Google's going to show you people also ask. And that's questions that people are also asking when they're searching for med spa marketing. Now, is that everything you need to talk about? No, but it's the perfect place to start. And what I want you to do then is I want you to start creating content blog posts, videos, social media posts, running webinars, doing podcasts, whatever you're interested in around those topics. So that primary topic of med spa marketing, and then the people also ask questions. And those are going to be things like, what's the best way for a med spa to use video? Or what's the best way for a med spa to do blogging? Or is blogging important for med spas? I don't know what they are exactly, but it's going to be those types of things. It's going to give you a roadmap to follow. And then all you do is you take those questions and you put those into Google and see what the next level is. In other words, if it's what marketing activities should med spas be in, then we Google that and we see what the people also ask questions are for that. That's going to give you on average about 15 different topics that you can work with before we even start talking about SEO and everything else. And if you create your content that way, it's going to work extremely well. And what I'm going to do is we're going to show you here in a minute in chat GPT and other tools, how to use AI to help you create a content calendar, how to write articles, video scripts, and social media posts. Now, I, quick disclaimer, don't copy paste. This is not just about putting it, write me a blog post and having it appear. It doesn't work that easily. But what used to take me hours to write a blog post, I can now do typically in about 15 to 20 minutes. And that allows you to produce a lot more content and still make it helpful. Elaine and I were just talking earlier about Google's new helpful content update. He mentioned it as the call was starting here today. You need to create relevant, helpful content but around a topic. And this is how to get your topics and get things started. All right. So Jonathan, I'm going to let you share your screen if you want. Just I'll let you take over just to show us and do a, and this is what I asked Jonathan to do was like, hey, show us like what you're doing so that we can actually see it. Not I love slides, but sometimes it's really awesome just to be able to see somebody do it right in the wild. Let's Here's do that. Let's yeah, let's jump in. And let's say I really need some inspiration and, and, and I'm going to pop over to YouTube here for a minute. This is one of Alex Hermosi's video. If you're an agency, you've heard of Alex Hermosi. And it's basically how to make more money than anything else on the internet. This video happens to be 43 minutes long and I don't want to deal with the entire transcript. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Chrome browser plugin that's called Harpa, H-A-R-P-A dot 
AI. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to ask it to create me a YouTube summary. So one of the things it has, you can see right here, is create a YouTube summary. I'm going to have it create a longer version of that. And it's going to go through the transcript. And this is AI, folks. This is ChatGPT right here. It's using the ChatGPT model or their API model to create this content. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy it. It's long, so it's going to have multiples. I'm going to, while that's thinking, I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to paste this in. I'll show you what we're going to do with it here in a second. So let's see here. We've got first one and our second one. So only two. That's not bad. And I'm going to take that information. I'm going to go back over to chat GPT and I'm going to paste that in here. Now that's my transcript. So now I need to tell it to do something. And let's say I want to start by writing a blog post. So we're literally going to say you, let's just say, please write. Yes, I say please to chat GPT. A long blog post on the topic of how to make money online using this transcript from Alex Hormozzi as a guide. Please include at least eight H2 sections and a FAQ with, oops, not FAW, FAQ with at least five questions and answers. Now I'm gonna tell you, it's not always going to go ahead and give you the exact number of words that you want here. It doesn't always work that way. The other thing that we can add into here is if you have a personality that you like, you can add that in here. In this case, I'm gonna say, please use the tone and style of Dan Kennedy. Most of us know Dan Kennedy as a marketing writer. Great. Let's go ahead and see what happens here. So notice we're not turning on any web access here. We're not looking at it. We're not, we're just using harpa.ai summary. We're pasting that in and then we're giving it an instruction here. And here we go. Now, some people ask Jonathan, why do you mention Alex Ramosi? He's that's where my inspiration's coming from. I want to give him credit, not to mention in this case, he's well known. So why not bring him into this content? I'm not going to lose any credibility because I'm being inspired by Alex Ramosi. So you can see it's going to go ahead and create. It's going to take just a minute to walk through this. While it's doing that, I want to show you we could do the exact same thing in Claude if we chose to. I'm not going to go ahead and do it twice. And in theory, Bard will do this as well. Now I say in theory, because if you've played with Bard at all and you've had my experience, I, I have a love-hate relationship with Bard. I find it like a uh, cantankerous toddler. Oftentimes it will refuse to answer things that I want to know. But where Bard is great is if you're looking for related keywords. And while ChatGPT is thinking, let me just show you an example. Again, let's go back to MedSpa marketing and say, we're in Bard. And also please provide me with the top 10 uh, semantically I can spell that related keywords for med spa marketing. Put in a table and include monthly search volume. There we go. Now, this is an area where Bard almost always works and works well. From everything I've read, it's actually using Google's ad tools to figure this out. And so here I can go, I can very quickly get other related topics from an SEO perspective that I can write. So we were talking about ideas. Here's 10 more ideas that you can use and you can see based on where the search volume, what's getting the most. Let's go back and check on chat GPT. All right. So there we're done. Now I'm not going to read through this, but it's a good start to our article. It's definitely not maybe the 2000 words I'd like to see, but this has given me a really good start. Now, I've asked it to include the FAQ. Now I'm going to ask it to go ahead and now create a key takeaway section. And guys, just so you know, this is exactly how I write these blog posts. You can do the exact same thing and have it create the same values. Here's my key takeaways. Now, what I generally do and I won't do here is I copy and paste this all into a Google Doc and I just move things around as needed making it super easy for me to do. And then when I'm done with that Google Doc, I can post that directly in as a blog post. By the way, I have it write the key takeaways after it writes the blog post because it probably won't know what they are until the blog post is done. So that's why you do the key takeaways at the end. And then I do put that back up towards the beginning of the blog post. So that's that. We've got that created and that's great. Now I want to say, please create five compelling social media posts 
about the lessons in this article. Mm. And he, this is now going to create our social media posts for us. We could do 10, we could do 15, doesn't really matter, but we're going to get some good social media posts. What I recommend with these, when you're basing them off your article, go out to Facebook, go out to Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, wherever you're at, and you post these in with a link back to your blog post on your article. That way you're creating more links. That's helpful. And you're encouraging people to go back and read that. But I well, can take any one of these. Go ahead, Lane. It's really, uh, that's Jonathan just mentioned something that's really important that uh, a lot of people just miss. They do social media posting and then they don't have a blog article that's anchored to it and that they're linking to it from social media. So now I understand that sometimes you need to do that in order to get more reach in social media by not having external third part external links that because that, the social media algorithms want to keep people inside Facebook and then I have external links taking them out. So I get that. But from an SEO perspective, that referral traffic, because Google Analytics will know that you're getting traffic from trusted sources. When you get referral traffic, those are social signals. And that referral traffic through that trusted referral source is all calculated. And that's super valuable. Plus, it gives the reader who really wants and goes, oh, that's a cool social post. I'd like to actually learn more. It gives them something, a place to go and then a place to read. And then if they're really interested because they've clicked through, their, their dwell time is typically going to be longer too because they're going to read the article. And that's going to be another signal that you're going to get for ranking. Don't forget how important tying all this in with a link is in for your SEO um, efforts, whether it's for your own agency and your own brand or your clients. And as Lane said that I've continued on and I've, I've just now asked it to write a press release for me. Now oh. it's doing something we call hallucinating a little bit here because I asked it to include some testimonials. So it's just made them up like you did in middle school when your teacher asked you to do something and you had no idea what to do. Chat GPT will do that as well. They call it hallucination. Don't worry about it. Just go in and put in some testimonials in here, guys. It yeah. doesn't have to be related to this article. And then what I want you to do, and Lane, don't laugh at my press release because I haven't proofread read this yet, but talk to us for a minute. How can we take this press release and get, use it to create more credibility and build our omnipresence? This is your area. Yeah, this is, this is Signal Genesis, right? This is what we created Signal Genesis for, was to amplify and create authoritative signals with content that other, would otherwise typically just sit static on a blog or maybe in a press newsrooms on a site. Um, but typically we just create content and the most that people will do or agencies or SEOs will do with it is maybe do some blog guest blog posts with it. Right. But that's expensive and manual and it's it actually is really expensive. And you get one blog post for 200 bucks. You get a, your article on one other blog article and that those typically aren't going to be driving traffic as much as they're used for more link and authority building which has its value, but it's manual and it's expensive. So if you use Signal Genesis, you can use Chat GPT like we're teaching you now and create the press releases that's all related around a specific topic. So notice what Jonathan's doing. He took a topical video and now he's he's literally creating all sorts of what we call snackable content, that short snippets of snackable content and but it's all topically related and then tying it into a longer form blog article and a longer form press release. And all this will tie together to help create what Jonathan was talking about in the very beginning, which is topical authority. And when you have all the snackable content and it's on multiple channels and you're posting it daily, you just, that's the omnipresent strategy in, in essence. So I'm going to let Jonathan come back here. But if you're if you're getting value from this, if this is really good, if you're learning some th good like practical tactics and strategies here, put gold in the chat here just so we can encourage Jonathan, let him know that um, we're getting some value out of this. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So we've done the press release. We've done the, the basics. Now I've went out and I've said, I need some video. Now, one of the tools, I, tips I want to help you when you're using AI, don't expect it to be the easy button where I can just type in, take this summary, write a blog post, write my videos, write my press release in one prompt. You need to do multiple prompts so that you don't get lost. So the first thing I did with video is I asked it to give me five topics that mm -hmm. I can use as Instagram reels. And it did a great job of this. And I love the starving crowd one. So then I took the starving crowd topic and said, write me a compelling Instagram reel voice video. Now, why do I use voice video? Because ChatGPT loves to give you production notes and it's frustrating to me. So mm -hmm. I just wanted this to be a talking head video. I'm going to literally, guys, we're going to 
We're going to grab our phones. We're going to paste this into something like Big View or a teleprompter. And we're going to read this script. And I'll do it for you right here live. And you can see how it might work out. So it's giving me one. Let's try it out and just see how this goes. Hey, entrepreneurs, have you ever heard of the starving crowd principle? No? Buckle up, because this might just be the game changer you've been waiting for. Imagine a crowd, hungry and eager, desperately searching for a solution. They're not just your any audience. They're your audience. These are the folks who need what you offer. They're ready to buy, and they're looking for you. Targeting this starving crowd isn't just smart. It's profitable. And why? Because they don't need convincing. They already want just what you've got. But here's the catch. You've got to find them. And once you do, you've got to serve them the exact solution they're craving. By focusing on this eager segment, you'll not, you're not just boosting sales. You're building loyal customers who come back for more. So are you ready to discover your starving crowd? And more importantly, are you ready to serve them? Think about it. And hey, why not watch this again for an extra dose of inspiration? So guys, I didn't edit that at all. But that's not bad. That's workable. And hey, now, guys, don't worry. That. Jonathan had a little hiccup there where he missed something and just repeat it. Don't worry about that stuff. You're human and people, that's part of the attraction here is that people that are going to be attracted to you when you're doing this don't care. They, they, that's the reminder that you're like them because we all know we, we make mistakes. No one's going to read or do a video and have it be like just perfect off on first take. Everything that we see that looks perfect, we know has been staged and produced and post-produced. And Jonathan, talk to us a little bit about produced video versus kind of live, raw shorts and reels and Absolutely. the differences there in terms of engagement and positive successful outcomes. With almost every audience available in America today and certainly around the world as well, people are, are are sensing produced videos and they're not watching them nearly to the extent that they are. Now, if you happen to be Kim like Kardashian, TikTok maybe so, that's different. Blown up. It's, yeah, it's absolutely. TikTok. Yeah. You, you Again, if you're Kim Kardashian, it may be different, but I'm not, and I don't even want to be. So I want people to watch my videos. To give you real numbers, my average short form video, something just like I read that I would record and put out there, is going to, in the first week, get around 1,000 to 3,000 views. And what's is that with you advertising when, or is that all organic? That's all organic. I haven't, I hope Dennis Hughes is not listening, but I haven't even started doing his dollar a day yet. I'm planning on it. I just haven't got there. Uh, again, that's just organic. And again, it's creating the appeal that we want with my prospects now literally reaching out today. I've had four inquiries today from people that were reaching out about stuff that I've done. We're like, Jonathan, you keep talking about topical authority. You keep talking about omnipresence. You keep talking about AI. How can you help me do that? And that's a great way to build a business. So guys, it's simple. It didn't take us but maybe 10 minutes here. We grabbed the video for inspiration. We created a blog post on that. Obviously, we didn't post it out, but that doesn't take long to do. We created social media posts. And you could do five more easily. We created a press release, which then you can use Signal Genesis to help promote and get traffic to. And then we created five video scripts, five topics, and then one video script. But we could create five more. In an hour, if we created all these videos, posted all the social media, posted the blog, we would have five days worth of content or more done for the entire week. So my challenge to you is can you take one hour Follow this. Lean's going to probably make the replay available. Go through exactly what we did here. I'll share this. In fact, I'll share this exact chat GPT session so you guys can go look at this and see what we've done. You guys can use these exact same prompts and do this on your own. It's not hard to do. And if you could do it all in an hour, would it be worth it? Could you invest one hour per week to create this omnipresence? What do you think, guys? Is is it? Do you think anyone's? You know, I'd like to hear from some of you, whether it's in chat or or live. What are your thoughts? Do you think this helps with reducing that perceived value of the big heavy lift of creating the content and how and all these different channels, social posts versus PR versus blog? Like what? What are you thinking there? Anybody want to chime in, unmute themselves, or put it in chat? We'd just like to get some feedback on what you think here in terms of, will this help you? Does this help reduce that, maybe either the mental and part of the real components of that heavy lift? While you're doing that, Lane, I just posted the link in the chat as well. So if you guys want to take this, and if you've never done this, by the way, you can literally click on that link. It'll open up chat GPT for you, and you can start using those prompts, playing off that and expanding on what we just did. 
Why don't you click share your screen again and just show people even how to share a chat thread in chat GPT? Because I don't think that's one of those. Great most idea. So literally I'm in my chat GPT window. This is where we did all that. Obviously, most of you probably know there's chats over on the side. You can rename them if you want. So in this case, we'll just call it Marketing Center of Excellence webinar. That way I can reference it easily. But if I go up in the right-hand corner here, all I click is share and it says share link to chat. And it's gonna go ahead and send this to you. It will, or create the link, I'm sorry. This is the entire chat up until the point we've stopped right here. So that link that I post is gonna share that with you. Yeah. And it'll literally open up the same chat window for you. You won't see my stuff, but you will see this particular channel and everything in here. So you guys can copy and paste to your heart's content, or you can continue. And a reminder, when you're working with ChatGPT, Claude, or Bart, any of them, if you stay within the same chat yeah, itself, yeah. it's going to remember the content you were talking about. So again, assuming this is something you're interested in, you guys can start creating videos right now that are likely of interest to your customers about the power of an offer, the power of a starving crowd, the value. It's not about being just your product, how to compete on price, all those things that are super important to your clients. You've gotten five topics right there you can start with. I th again, the, the overarching strategy here is just to stay in front of your target audience. Stay in front of them with valuable information that they can use. Are they going to use every single post? No, but some things are going to hit them. And so part of what I wanted to talk about here was years and years ago, Google released this whole idea of the zero moment of truth. Has anybody heard of that before? The zero moment of truth? You can look it up. You can Google it. I, I can share my screen here if I look it up here. But the zero moment of truth was all about like when the your target audience makes a buying decision, what what's that moment of truth where they, they make that decision? And yeah, here it is. Let me just share my screen again. We'll just talk about this for a second because I think it's relevant to what we're talking about here. Super relevant, absolutely. Come on now. All right. So The online, how, the internet has changed how we decide what we do, what to buy, and and even sometimes when to buy it because of the internet's it's sped up that process, right? So there's a whole, there's a whole, there's a whole knowledge base here around this whole zero moment of truth concept. You'll hear advertisers talking about being in the right place at the right time with the right message, and that's when you get those three, you earn a new customer. Being at the right place at the right time with the right message. Uh, the, the What I don't like about that is it requires some sort of magical timing that I'm not in control of. And so the contrast that I wanna make here between the right place, the right time at the right message and or the zero moment of truth concept because it's the, the two are very much interrelated or, or, or similar is contrast those concepts, principles with the omni-channel, omnipresent strategy. When you are when you execute on an omni-channel, omni omnipresent strategy, you don't have to worry about timing because you're always in front of your of your target audience. And if you do the research like Jonathan just taught and use a leverage AI, instinctively, I think, and as agencies, we can know what messages are gonna hit with our audience. Like what do they want to do? Like they all want to grow their business. So just talk about the different ways and strategies and things that, from a digital marketing standpoint that are going to Hit their hit your audience, and then if you just execute omni channel, omni presence, you're you never have to worry about timing because when the timing is right for them, they will reach out to you because you will be in front of them, and no one else will be. No, it's it's so so relevant to this entire concept, Lane. I think that's a great share, and and you're right. If you're doing omnipresence, you don't have to worry about the exact moment because you will be in front of them. One of the great things that I've learned from my mentors, Josh Nelson being one, Dennis, you being another in this area, is you can trust the algorithms on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. They want you, those users to spend more time on the platform. And so what's going to happen, and part of the reason it takes a little bit of time for your videos to gain traction is that they're showing your videos to people and the algorithm is determining what's happening. Are they interacting? Are they not interacting? And then as they do that, they're going to show it to more people that interact with it or that are like those people. And that's why after a few months, you're going to start this truly this tsunami of leads coming in. And it's amazing. Yeah, go ahead. Then. So again, John, and just really quickly cover again, what how, I'm an agency, I'm in med spa marketing or electricians marketing, whatever it might be. 
And I, how do I know what topics I should cover? I know you've already covered this. I just want to, I want you to reiterate the, the yep. FAQ PAA stuff, right? Yeah. So again, as a starting point, and this isn't everything, but to get started, just do a Google search on that topic, med spa marketing, and then grab the people also ask questions and feed those questions. Google's going to literally tell you what other questions people are asking regarding that topic. Feed those into AI and ask it to help you create content. Maybe don't ask it to write a blog post initially, but say, what are five blogs I could write to answer this question or these five questions or whatever? When you're writing those blog posts, and I do think blog posts are critical because you want Google to index that content. You need that written content. It's got to be helpful, though. We could talk about the whole EEAT model. I'm sure everybody's familiar with that already, and Lane knows a lot more about it than I do. But you want it to be helpful. I do recommend when you're writing those blog posts, though, 500-word blog posts today, folks, they don't cut it anymore. You need to be writing, in my mind, my opinion only, but your base blog post should be 2,000 words or more, and your pillar pieces are that central piece, that really important, that med spa marketing, that centerpiece, that probably needs to be closer to 3,500 to 4,000 words. And I know that sounds like a lot, but remember, we're going to use AI to help us do that. Like as we just said, if you feed those questions, those topics into AI and ask them for related questions, they're going to give them to you. And guys, just answer them. They're, they're, use your expertise as an agency to answer those questions. Don't go research them all unless you need to. But most of it's not about statistics. Most of it's about answering questions. It would be like somebody saying, Jonathan, how do I create a blog post using ChatGPT? I just showed you. Do exactly what I did. Show them how to do it that is a great, could be a great video. And again, tying back to what I started off in the, in the beginning is there's also the, the Google um, algorithm update issues. If you're providing SEO as one of your solutions, then <clears throat> talking about those, just even just trending news, new updates around the news, show people, show you, they're, they're great topics because they're highly relevant, they're trending, they're new. And a lot of your customers as an agency are not going to know about this stuff. They're not keeping their finger on the pulse of Google updates or algorithm updates or big things, big new feature releases inside Google's ecosystem or whatever it might be, right? And so use up just the latest news as topical ideas. To Absolutely. Just, you know, feed them and then do what Jonathan just taught you. Feed them back into AI, an AI model, whether it's chat GPT or something else, have it spit out all the different types, types of snackable content and then use software to post it everywhere because you don't have to go single. Jonathan, do you post all this sing, channel by channel, one by one? No, um, I do some of it in, in some of the areas, but most of it's done with other tools that, again, go out there and help make sure that it happens or gets scheduled. Um, we're, we're doing a whole bunch of testing right now on that. I had been posting a lot of it manually, and I actually, one of the speaking engagements I got turned into a regular contributor. I'm now writing an article for a social media, one of the national social media managers groups in the United States. Awesome. And they challenged me because I had made the comment that, boy, I seem to get better engagement. So they challenged me with to use some of the tools that are out there. And they're right. I'm not seeing the, the differences that I had originally anticipated. Use those tools. Again, this does not have to take all day. You can do this in about an hour a day. Hootsuite, Hero Posts, Vendasta has a social software that's like Hootsuite. I'm sure there's High Level's got one now if you use High Level. High Level. Come on, there's another one out there that's really good. I'll think of it. But there's plenty of software out there to make this really easy. You got all your posts, put it into your software, hit the publish button and go get your next sale while your content gets posted everywhere uh, for you. So Again, and, and and this is what I love about AI, and this is why I wanted to bring Jonathan on because he's really leveraged it so well um, for his own business, and now he's obviously doing it for other clients, uh, is AI helps even with creation. That's one of the biggest things for me was the mental energy that it takes to come up with topics, then come up with the content, and then make sure it was just quality and helpful now. We got to follow those guidelines, make sure it's demonstrating expertise and experience, the EAT signals. And you can really leverage AI to just do all of that for you, both the ideation and the creation, just feed it some really good specific prompts and let it do, go do its work. And so it's removing that hurdle that used to be there of all of this heavy lifting of the creation, uh, the ideation and the creation of the content. Absolutely. All right, Jonathan, let's move into the next secret here. Perfect. 
And this is really a lot of what we've been talking about, how to consistently yeah. create content without being overwhelmed. Lane, you were just saying exactly, the, I think you answered this perfectly. It's how we do that. We showed you already. We logged into ChatGPT. You guys can use these tools to help with that content. If nothing else, you, I, like I said, in back in October, I decided I was going to do multiple social media posts today. ChatGPT, Claude, Bard, they have made that so easy and then I've done one thing, Lane's seen it, even commented on it. I use Midjourney to create a lot of my images. It's an AI image generation tool. And I fell in love very early with kind of Pixar styled animated images. And now I use those all the time. And you would not believe how many people I get comments from because there's even a consistency in the type of the image that I'm posting. It's part and of your that brand. helps create your brand. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And Jonathan's got a certain, if you followed him, you just see those same Pixar style animated, almost saw animated video images, not even videos, they're just images. And it's just become part of his brand. And like, you just, it's, so you can do the same thing with your brand, right? And do the same thing with your agency brand and your, or, and, or your personal brand. And I think it's probably a good point here to make is every one of you has to make a decision of whether you're going to promote your agency brand, your personal brand, or both. Mm -hmm. I, I say, why not both? Because you should be doing Absolutely. both. Absolutely. I do. I build the Lane Health brand. I have the Marketing Center of Excellence brand. Then I have the Quantum Agency brand and the Signal Genesis brand. That may seem like a lot, more than probably the average, because most people don't have two companies. They just have one, the agency. But yeah, build your personal brand. Get your personal name out there. And then also uh, align it. Oftentimes you'll see my Lane Help logo with my MCOE logo. I, I marry the two together in my imagery so that people can marry the two together, right? That just creates an association in our brains. Don't be afraid to, to build your personal Jonathan Mass brand and your White Beard Strategies brand, your David Laird brand and your agency brand, because you want to elevate your personal experience, your personal expertise in the marketplace, because you're part, you're the CEO, you're the founder, you're the leader of your company. It also will help with SEO going back to eat. Your Google wants to tie content to an individual, not to an entity. It will tie the content to an entity as a fallback if it must, but the algorithm really wants to tie content to a person, an individual, a human being. So if you're going to make it easier for the bot to create to associate you as a personal brand and you as the author of the content to your company brand. And that will also help with your SEO if you're doing SEO for your agency, which I hope you are, because that will be one of your number one lead drivers if you do it consistently. Again, just like this strategy, SEO, content marketing, omnipresence, these are things that don't pay off in 30 days. Okay. These are the types of strategies that pay off in 12 months. It may pay off, like for Jonathan, it paid off even faster, right? So it can happen faster. But these are the things that we, these are strategies that you execute and you execute and you execute for months and years. And they just, it's like a snowball. The momentum and the compounding interest that you get from the daily activity is is immense, which Jonathan's already shared about. Jonathan? No, but it's just, it. Yeah, it's so, so critical. Remember, there, there's multiple tools you can use to do this. You don't have to use ChatGPT. There's other competitors like Claude and Bard. They can help you and they'll do essentially the same thing. The other thing I want to talk to you about really is when it comes to publishing these topics, and we're going to go through the people also asked. Now, Lane may have some perspective here too, is he knows a lot more about SEO than I do. But I've had tremendous luck by taking that primary topic, the med spa marketing primary topic, and I post that on day one. Then just a couple days later, I want to post the sub pillar or the people also ask questions that support that. And then a couple of days later, I'm going to take one of those sub pillars and I'm going to publish the sub supporting documents or level three. And I'm going to do that. That gives me probably two weeks worth of posting. And over that two weeks, I'm going to post about 15 to 20 blog posts. That has worked incredibly well. And it's something that I'm read about, Lane, you can probably explain, but called acceleration that Google seems to really like to see. And it's helped these articles get indexed and rank faster when you do that and then link in, in between those articles as well. So just another tip. The other thing I'll give you is when you create a video. So we, we did the example blog post for Alex Ramosi, and then we did some videos. 
link from the post those videos as posts in your blog and link back to that primary blog post. Create those internal links. That will also help you do that. Inside the blog, once the five videos are done, put some links inside the blog out to those subsection videos to, to create links there. All of that helps in the process. And I know as agencies, most of you know that, but I just want to remind everybody. Yeah, for sure. That's how you build topical authority. And, and and the algorithm loves what we call velocity, right? It loves content velocity. It loves signal velocity. If you look at your most authoritative websites that rank literally on page one because they're just such an authority, man, they put a blog article out about a topic, it's ranking because they're, they've got such authority. Look at their content velocity. They're putting out multiple blog posts a day, not not one a month or two a month. That's also why we have to always keep in mind that if we're not getting the ranking results that we're looking for around a, a, a specific topic or theme, both locally in the maps and organically, and the reason I say it is because there is a double down emphasis on the website now that is influencing the map pack rankings. There is a very tight correlation between topical authority on a website and rankings in those same in that same keyword themes in maps. Your our average SEO campaigns are doing maybe three or four blog articles a month at most, maybe a press release or two at most. Um, and yet if you look at the really authoritative sites in any given industry or niche, they're typically putting out articles daily, sometimes multiple articles daily. Uh, and so the content velocity, the signal velocity is just way higher in the highly authoritative sites versus almost everyone else. And so look at just pure content and signal velocity as part of your overall ranking strategy, especially if you're seeing the ranking stuck for some of these. Mm -hmm. The key is not to just throw out a bunch of content, though, using AI, right? So, Jonathan, talk about that a little bit, and I'll, I'll maybe add in a little bit there, too, because it's there's got to be this cautionary um, disclaimer here that we don't want to just go to AI and throw out a bunch of content and post it, because that may very well not be helpful, and that could end up hurting you more than helping you. No, absolutely. In fact, I've put in my own personal recommendation on the max number of posts per day. Lane, you may have some thoughts on that. And when I post those, I, guys, I know there are videos out there on YouTube. I just saw one the other day. They posted 13,000 blogs in four days and they got ranked. I know it can happen, but I also believe those are the type of blogs that are going to get absolutely slapped and slapped hard by these algorithm updates we're seeing. Face it, guys, Google's smart. They, they know you can't publish, go from zero posts a month to 13,000 posts in, in one month. It just doesn't happen that way. So be consistent and be what you are. I recommend no more than four posts a day. And thank you, by the way, for talking about velocity. I called it accelerations because I'm not an expert at the SEO part. All but right. that, that will create that velocity for you without hopefully triggering the Google to go, what happened here? It's just like warming up email. If you guys are familiar with that in cold email, it's better to start trickling not too slow, a one a day or something's great, but don't just save up 500 posts and dump them all at the same time. I'm also not a recommended person of doing auto blogging. Guys, chat GPT is great, but you don't want to trust it just to copy and paste out of it, or you're going to embarrass yourself and your agency. And it probably isn't going to take very long before you do it because it's going to totally mess up some stuff. You need to proof this. Doesn't have yeah. to, you don't have to read every word, but you've got to scan these articles. You've got to proof them and make sure it's doing the right thing. I'll give you a little inside tip. If you're really looking for help, write in chat GPT and go to Claude and have it proofread your document, giving it appropriate parameters. It'll save you some time. Awesome. All right. The blueprint, a topical authority. Yep. Yeah. So very simple, guys. This is about creating a map that you guys follow and stick with. I find it a whole lot easier to get where I'm going if I have a map. So I understand we we all get excited. We go, good, I can do this. And we do it for three days, maybe three weeks, rarely for three months. Develop a plan for yourself. And if you need help, reach out to Lane, reach out to myself. We're happy to be a resource and help you guys out that work through that. This process does build your credibility and if you just focus on, again, articles, blog posts, video, social media, and then use press releases to amplify that, guys, you if you can stick to do this and commit to at least six months, preferably a year, 
then it becomes easy. It's probably like exercise if I was any good at that, and I'm not. I've been on a diet for the last five months. The first couple of months were hard. Mm -hmm. Now it's easy. It's become a way of life. I don't even think about it anymore. And I find content creation like this is the same way. If you want to be omnipresent, develop the habits and then stick to them. My recommendation, one video a day. Yes, I know it's hard, but it's not as hard as you think. Three or more social media posts. Especially if you create all that video in one day of your month, right? Just go in, yeah. create, just give a quick little synopsis of how you create the videos for the whole month. So I, guys, if you watch my videos, you know, a lot of them, I'm sitting in my truck. Why? Because it's a comfortable place for me and I'm in it a lot. So I literally have a phone holder that goes right up on my windshield. I will sit and record 15 to 30 videos in one sitting, by the way, that generally takes not much more than a minute or two per video. So I can do 30 in about 45 minutes. I've got a month's worth of videos that are done and created. I, By the way, when you mess up, like Lane said, you run with it. Don't go back and try to fix it. Don't worry about perfect. Just run with it. Be yourself. Be authentic. I add captions to them and I publish them. That's it. I can do that on my phone. I've got a video editor I can send it to. If you don't, you can find one on Fiverr that'll caption them really quick. It's simple, easy to do. I use an app on my phone called Cap, not CapCut, Captions. I don't use CapCut, but I use Captions. And I can literally add captions to a video in about a minute. And I do that candidly while I'm watching TV at night with my wife or normally she's watching TV and I'm sitting next to her. So it's easy to do this stuff on your own if you want. And again, um, the, the 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 scripts are being created by AI. Like you're not to create the scripts, create the scripts with AI and then just go and create them, whether it's in your car or in your office or at home or wherever is most comfortable for you, where you feel like it's just like where you're going to just be able to just relax and be yourself, because right? that's the biggest important piece of this. The other thing is that perfection is your enemy. So for all you perfectionists yes. out there listening to this, who would be like, are going to be the ones who'd be like, oh, crap, that wasn't good enough. And then you're going to go back and record. And then that one's not going to be perfect. So you're going to go and do three, take three. And then before you know it, you've spent 10 minutes on one 30 second take and it's not perfect still. And you're going to be like, screw this. I don't have time for this. And you're going to go down and you're going to go back off and do something. Do not let perfection stop you from execution and implementation. Exactly. Totally agreed. It, it Just get it out there and do it. People want to see the authentic you. Be yourself. Uh, the other thing I recommend is in, I, in the chat, I see some people asking some questions. I recommend that you use a teleprompter on your phone. That way you can take these scripts right out of chat GPT. You paste them into the teleprompter and I do it on my computer. And then I pull my phone out later because it's faster. And I literally hold that up and I record those videos and I read them right off the screen. It is so easy and it is so fast. And here's the beauty. I don't have to then think a whole lot about what I'm doing. Last week, Saturday, my wife it happens to be into antiques, so we were out at a, an estate sale. I got bored after about 10 minutes. There was nothing I was interested in. I knew she was going to be another half hour. I went back to my truck. I already had a bunch of these scripts set up in big view. I opened up my teleprompter, and I recorded 12 videos sitting in my truck while I was waiting for her to come out. She actually wasn't gone as long as I thought, about 15 minutes. Now I have all those videos ready to post and ready to use. They it's, it's, don't worry about perfection. She pointed out we had stuff in the back seat because she'd bought a couple other things. So there's a some contraption behind me in the seat. Who cares? Nobody watching my video cares about what's in the back seat of my car. They care about the value that I'm bringing to them. And if you bring value, and these ways will bring value, they're not going to care whether your kid's in the back seat or not. It's not a big deal. Start getting the content out there. The biggest thing is again, this, if you go back to the purpose of this, to stay in front of your audience so that you're always in front of them, so that when the zero moment of truth happens for them, they think of no one else but you because you've been in front of them every single day on any kind of network or channel that they might have trafficked in. Yeah. Uh, so the, and if you guys want, you know, you can take a quick screenshot of this or whatever. I'll, I'll provide the slide deck to everybody when we're done here as well, so that you have this. But this is a really good kind of blueprint for how to start out with terms of just the content velocity, how much and where. It is. And remember, most of your competitors are not going to be willing to do this. If you're willing to build your business, we're not talking eight hours a day here, folks. We're talking 30 minutes a day for you to be wildly successful. All right. And so one of the questions was, what's the tool that you help that helps you proofread? Someone said that's Claude.ai. So yeah, you can do it different ways. I If I want to help 
help proofreading, I tend to write in chat GPT and then I will copy and paste that over into Claude.ai and have it proofread it. When you do it, you want to give it instructions. I tell it to proofread, to improve readability, to improve clarity, things like that. The other tip I'll give you if you're talking about facts, because chat GPT and Claude will hallucinate, so will Google Bard. Go to a tool called perplexity.ai. I'll type that in the chat, perplexity.ai. It's an AI-based search engine. You type a question in there and perplexity will not only answer the question for you, but it'll give you four to six citations that you can use. Awesome. That also can really Great be helpful. Tip. Awesome. Let me just go there real quick. And then I'll let you just do the quick summary here while I'm going to perplexity too. Sure. So while that's happening, again, just a reminder on what we want to stay focused on here. We want to make sure that you're focused on the stuff that is going to cause you to win. And my step-by-step, -step, here's it's five steps, guys. One, do one video daily without fail. You don't have to record it, but post one. If you do nothing else, that'll have probably the single biggest impact short-term for you. Right to, number two, write topical authority-based articles. SEO is important, but you will develop great SEO if you focus on answering the questions that Google wants to see you answer. Number three, create video scripts from those articles. So we write the articles, then create the video scripts, just like I showed you how to do in ChatGPT. Number four, create press releases for each one of those articles, and especially for your pillar content and your subpillar. When you look at people also asked, that's that main topic and the next three questions or so they asked. Do press releases and use Signal Genesis to amplify that. And then number five is once you've created this content, share and amplify it on social media. Put it out there on every channel that your audience watches. Yes, I know in theory it might be better to go ahead and, and post different content to Facebook and different content to LinkedIn and different content to Twitter. I don't have that much time in a day. I do have 30 minutes, though, that I can create that content and send it out to all those channels. And for the most part, different audience members of mine are in different channels. I don't have to be totally unique there. For sure. Uh, really great blueprint. And this just will work. Guaranteed. Like it will work if you're in a niche, whether it's a local niche or an industry niche, and you want to be omnipresent, you want to be become the, the recognized expert in that, that area, that niche, this is how you do it. It just, it's, and you get, and again, don't let perfection prevent you from implementing and executing this strategy for yourself. Jonathan, if, if I'll just in, in full disclosure, if you guys don't want to do this, Jonathan will offer to do this for you, won't you? This is what my agency, Whitebeard Strategies, does. I, I teach you how to do it, and I know that some of you don't want to, and that's okay. I know how. I'll use the same tools we've talked about, and I'll do it for you. If you guys want to get a sample of the type of content we create, and you're an agency, you have to be an agency, but go to whitebeardstrategies.com slash agency30. It's going to bring you to a form you can fill out, and it'll book a 30-minute call with me. I do ask you to give me 30 minutes, but in exchange for that, I'm going to give you three blog posts based on Google's People Also Ask and three video scripts. And I'm going to give you a full SOP, standard operating procedure of how to post and link it along with a video walkthrough so you can see how to do it. So if you give me 30 minutes, I'm going to go over what we've talked today. I'm going to encourage you to, to look at what we have to offer. I'll give you that content for free. The only thing I ask is, and there is a catch, but it's not much. If you like the content, consider subscribing to one of our services. That's it. You don't have to, but give me a chance to show you what type of content we can get. Worst case, you get three blog posts and three video scripts for 30 minutes of your time. So if you're like, if you're one of the perfectionists or, and there's some of us are going to be like that. I, I can tend to be like that myself. I have to really tell myself, stop, don't worry about it. Just be human. But if you're one of those types or you're just really busy and you're like, no, I know I'm not going to implement this, but I know I need to. Then, then consider getting some help with this with either Jonathan or somebody like Jonathan. But don't, I guess the point here is do not let perfection and do not let time and do not let busyness stop you from implementing this in your agency. Uh, I remember Brian Niebler when I, no, it was Jim Allen. I'm sorry, not Brian. Jim Allen, who, who I met with about the podcast for Roofing Marketers, he said to me, he said, my only regret is I didn't start doing this two, three, five years ago. Like he goes, the impact on our business 
He goes, There's this has been the number one, was doing their podcast and the omnipresent strategy. And they use the podcast and all the topics in the, the video that they that they talk about on their podcast as the way to stay in and the shorts and the reels that come from that to stay in front of their audience daily, right? So their podcast was really more their content generation platform for them, but they use the content from their podcast episodes and the recordings to develop preeminence in, the, in their in their niche and to develop that that daily uh, omni-channel, omnipresent strategy. And he just said, man, I just wish I would have done this two years ago instead of a year ago or whenever they started it. And I had the same sentiment. Like once I had created mm -hmm. real consistency, because it doesn't happen right away. We are all like that. Like we see somebody show up on our screen and we're like, yeah, I know they're probably going to be the fly by nighter and I won't see him again. But you keep seeing somebody over and over again. You start to listen, you start to recognize, you start to remember, it starts to become top of mind. And that's the goal of this entire strategy. So that when our prospects, our target audience are open or they're ready for a solution, they're just going to think of nobody else but you. So that's the goal of all this. Let me see if there's any more questions before we call it a day. Mohammed asks, are all of these recommendations to, con to content creator only? I, I think they're any to anybody that wants to create a omnipresence. If you want to be seen as that omnipresent, then these recommendations will work for you. Lane said it's not a if it'll work. It will work. It absolutely will. Now, if you if you're you want to have somebody do the content for you, that's all fine as long as they follow this methodology. That's mm -hmm. as as we mentioned. That's what I do. So I can help you do that. But you can do it on your own as well. Take this information and run with it. If you follow these steps on this summary page, you will absolutely develop that topical authority. You will create that omnipresence. And again, Lane and I have been taught by some of the same people here, Josh Nelson and others. Brian Niebler is, again, a great example. And I totally agree with what Brian said. I only wish I had started doing this long before last October because I can't imagine how much more success the business would have had over the last number of years had I started doing this earlier. It is an absolute game changer, folks. I can't even begin to describe how much value there is in doing this. And and again, follow the blueprint because it, again, I think some of us will go, well, it doesn't have to be daily. I, I'll just do it once a week and I'll just modify it because I don't have the time. If you don't have the time to do it, then get it done for you by somebody who will do it for you. But don't don't start decreasing frequency in this because the, the key to the strategy is the frequency. Ab absolutely the, the velocity matters of the frequency <laughs> let me put it that yes. way it's the consistency of the frequency that really pays the dividends really make sure that uh, that you follow the blueprint that john jonathan's laid out because it is that daily type of consistency that really pays its dividends in velocity or what i call the compounding interest of that daily consistency that, that pays its dividends all right so justin says hey jonathan is there a reason you're not posting the videos to youtube and actually, I didn't mention it, but yeah, we YouTube is a channel that every video gets posted to because that's I'm using their embed codes inside my WordPress blog to go ahead and bring those videos into my blog. And I highly recommend you do that. I will say, if you're going to share on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or Twitter, I have found you get significantly better engagement by uploading that video separately to each platform as opposed to sharing that YouTube link. On Facebook in particular, I get six to eight times more engagement if I upload a video to Facebook than if I share a YouTube link. Yep, 100%. Upload the raw video right into the YouTube post. The Instagram yep. post, don't use the YouTube video link. Because again, I went back to what I said before, the algorithms really don't like third-party external linking. They like to keep the user inside that, that the app or the platform. So that so when you upload the video versus hitting a YouTube link and then bouncing out, the, the algorithm is just going to naturally show it to more people because it wants that video, that raw video is in the post itself. They're not going to bounce out. But I do recommend uploading it to YouTube. Remember, YouTube is the second largest search engine. It's great for that. It's also uh, another thing I will often do. I'll take the audio out of this and I'll upload it to SoundCloud as well. Yeah, and we do the same thing. Like we take, so when we, when I either do like this masterclass, the, re, the replay of today is going to come to me in both, you know, MP4 and MP3 from Zoom. And then we'll take the MP3 format and that's going to go into our podcast.co account, which is what we use to amplify our podcast episodes or our audio episodes. And this will be considered a podcast episode because there's going to be audio of this class. And so the MP3 will go into podcast.co 
podcast.co will then instantaneously sync and syndicate the episode to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and about five or six others that are a little bit less known. And so, yeah, the more video content that you create, it also gives you audio content. And that is another medium of content that some people are just in, they're just podcasts, they're audio, they're audible book listeners, they're podcast listeners. Mm -hmm. They don't watch videos and they won't read a blog post, but they will listen to an audio file on their way to work every day or something like that. So again, omni-channel, right? Think of as many channels as you can hit with this content. And that's the beautiful thing about the blueprint that Jonathan's laid out is it gives you snackable content in video, in audio, in social, in blog, in press release, in all those formats. And then it gives you, obviously, all those different channels then to syndicate it to because of the different formats you have. Uh, well, one thing we didn't really talk about was images, although Jonathan did mention how he uses MidJourney to create image content as all as a part of the overall content posting experience and he's using ai to create the images so don't you don't have to like oh i have to go out and get a, a canon camera and then go out and create good photos and no use ai to create your, your images and then just use develop a consistency of what you're doing like jonathan has so that it becomes even part of your brand and then you've got image content you've got audio content you've got social content you've got pr content you've got blog content and and you got software to help you blast it everywhere so Folks, I hope this added a lot of value to you as you listen, watched today, as you, if you're going to watch or listen to the replay, really hope this adds value to you and helps you uh, create a kind of a, both a format, a blueprint of how to march forward with this for yourself and maybe your clients. And more importantly, show you how to remove that hurdle of the heavy lift that content has been for years and years for us who have been in the game longer. AI has done so much to help us, if, but if you don't leverage it, like any other tool, it's largely useless. So Jonathan, thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy day to share with us, to share with your strategy, to show us how you've done it in real life example. I just really appreciate well, thank all the value you've added to us today. Thank you. No, thank you for the invitation. I love what you're doing here at Marketing Center of Excellence and certainly appreciate you as a mentor and guide as you've helped me so much along the way. So Lane, thank you for the opportunity. It's been uh, truly appreciated. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, everyone who has been here live. I hope it's uh, helped you. Have a great rest of your week, everyone. Again, we'll be here again a month from now in October, last Tuesday of October for our next Masterclass series. And I'll have the replay up here just as soon as we can get it post-produced and, and ready for everyone in all of our channels. Again, Jonathan, thank you. Everyone have a great rest of your day and have a great, a great rest of your week as well.